everybody. Welcome to this webinar on CoEval AMR. There are still a few people joining, but I think we can get started. We have a, an hour for this webinar, and and then we will move on to to do a, a workshop, but that will not be public. So this is the public part of of our project. My name is Barbara Hester, and I'm a senior lecturer in Agri Health at the Royal Vet College in London, in the UK. And I've been leading the, the first phase of the CoEval AMR project. We are now starting the, the second phase, and this will be led by Cecile Annie Sandlin, who is also in the room here, and you should see her on the video. Cecile, I want to wave to people. <laughs> so, what we're going to do, we are um, I'm going to start and give you an overview of the CoEval AMR phase one. And then I will hand over to Simon Rueck, who is going to, to talk about the selection tool that we elaborated as part of this project. And then I'm going to hand over to Liz Alban, who is going to provide an overview of a, a range of case studies that we conducted. And then uh, the last presentation will be given by Laura Tomassone and Daniele Di Minegi who will then talk about a specific case study that they, that they did, did um, based on a surveillance system in Italy. And then I will say a few more words about the continuation of our work and there will be time for questions and, and answers as well. Welcome everybody and thank you for being here and making time to attend this seminar. I'm going to share my screen now and tell you a bit more about the, the work that we did. So the, the project is called Convergence in Evaluation Frameworks for Integrated Surveillance of Antimicrobial Use and Antimicrobial Resistance, CoEval AMR. And as I said, this is covering what we did in the, in the first phase. The project is funded by JPI AMR, and in the first phase, we received funding through the UK from the Medical Research Council. And in the second phase, it's now um, moving to, it's still on the JPI AMR, but moving to leadership in Canada. This is a consortium that has done the, the work that I'm presenting here today. We had a, a core group with the people that you see listed here, and then various network members who have contributed all along the way in various uh, activities. On the right, you see a geographic overview of the different countries that were involved in, in Europe. But of course, then we also had several other countries um, outside Europe, including Canada, Kenya, Tanzania, Vietnam, and Thailand. We are referring to integrated surveillance in CoEval AMR, and we elaborated the working definition in the consortium, which is that integrated surveillance in the context of One Health refers to surveillance that is based on a systemic cross-sectoral multi-stakeholder perspective to inform mitigation decisions with the aim to keep antimicrobials effective for future generations. And this is quite important to bear in mind when we think about the evaluation challenge. Antimicrobial use and antimicrobial resistance surveillance has multiple functions in a, in a policy cycle. And that's what makes the evaluation so, so difficult. So here in the middle, you see the different surveillance activities that we commonly see when we talk about AMU and AMR surveillance. We will have elements of data collection, data analysis, data interpretation, and information dissemination. And when we talk about One Health surveillance activities for AMU and AMR, we would want to see activities happening in animals and human populations as well as, as the environment. And this information is useful to think about prioritization, planning and design. The information then also helps to produce knowledge on, for example, the detection of trends, or it helps us to enhance the understanding of AMR epidemiology, but also the surveillance activities themselves that can help to increase awareness and, and change people's thinking on the topic. I'm just going to change my pointer. And then when we have this, this knowledge, um, uh, often it is used to inform policy changes, interventions, or, um, for example, any, any soft approaches to influence behavior. 
And then surveillance is used to, to check the progress on, on these interventions at the targets to see whether we are achieving what we want to do. And ultimately, we would, we would like to, to, to achieve our end goal, which is a reduction of AMR in animals, humans, and the environment, and help to generate better health. So with these multiple functions of surveillance, we, we have multiple evaluation needs all along the, the circle. And that's why we see quite a fragmented evaluation landscape. Multiple research groups who are working on the evaluation of integrated AMU and AMR surveillance, they are looking, for example, at things like the theory of change or how we can use systems-based approaches for surveillance. Some people have worked on the business case for, for AMR and AMU surveillance. Other people were focusing on government structures, others on sort of metrics and measurement approaches, and also some groups are working on the definition of integration levels. But overall, we felt that the activities were quite disconnected and they were done by different research groups focusing on different parts of the system. So we saw that there were, were multiple frameworks and tools and, and quite disjointed recommendations in terms of evaluation and measurement. And therefore, we created this network and we had to go to converge into existing frameworks and approaches for the evaluation of AMU and AMR surveillance, taking an integrated perspective. And we wanted to achieve that by having knowledge exchange and peer wow. learning among the people who are working on the evaluation of such surveillance. We also wanted to compare the existing evaluation frameworks, approaches, methods, and metrics, identify synergies, duplication, and gaps, and then select elements that could be part of a harmonized evaluation approach and make evaluation guidance publicly available. We had a couple of working, working groups, and today took care of the activities listed here. We put together a list of existing tools and frameworks and characterize them and then produce the selection algorithm, which uh, Simon is going to talk about more in a moment. Then we conducted a survey among potential end users to understand information needs and applied tools to selected case study to get a feeling for how they, they, they work and what their advantages and disadvantages may be. And then we pull, pull that all, all together to elaborate guidance for end users on how to conduct evaluations of integrated AMU and AMR surveillance. We had uh, multiple, multiple workshops uh, along the way, an inception workshop, a progress workshop, and then we also had several um, scientific missions where we visited each other tool to work on these activities. And once we had um, uh, enough material. We worked on the on the website and development, and then coded the online evaluation guidance and the selection tool. Uh, we also produced several outputs, such as policy briefs and papers, and so on. When you go to our website and you have the the link at the at the top, you will find the the results, which um, includes the online evaluation guidance, which we're going to present in a moment. There is also a, a range of videos, and I include screenshot here, which describes uh, the, the, the guidance and the elements of the guidance and what people may want to consider when doing a, an evaluation of AMU and AMR surveillance. And then we had multiple events and net, including networking events also produced some publications and posters. And there's also a policy brief on the web page that you can download. For the evaluation guidance, you have to link here at the, at the bottom. Uh, if, you, if you want to have a look, you will see that you get to a home page, which is called Evaluation Guidance, and there you will have a menu where you have the different parts of our guidance. The first one refers to an introduction to surveillance evaluation. And then um, we have something more specific on um, the evaluation of surveillance for AMU and AMR. And then we have a list of existing evaluation tools, and then the the support for selecting an, an evaluation tool, the case study, and the directory of tools. In the selection tool, um, you, you will see that, that you can use um, this, this tool to, to say which aspects are of importance for in, in your evaluation. And Simon will, that, will explain that in more detail, so I'm not going to say more about that. And then we have the case studies where we have listed all the case studies that were conducted with a short report. And again, Liz will say more about that. 
So without further ado, I would like to introduce our next speakers. First, Simon Vogel Talk. He's a senior scientist in the epidemiology section at the Metzius Faculty at the University of Zurich in Switzerland. And he will give the talk with the overview on the support for selecting an, an evaluation tool. And then we have Liz Alban, who is a chief scientist at the Danish Agriculture and Food Council and also a professor at the University of Copenhagen. And she will talk about the case studies. And then we have Daniele Demenegi and Laura Tomassoni, who are both researchers and lecturers at the Department of Veterinary Sciences at the University of Turin, Italy. And they will talk about a specific case study on the application of the tools to the classic farm system in swine production in Italy. And with that, I will hand over to Simon, please. Yes, hello, welcome from my side. Thank you for the introduction. So I'm going to take you through um, the selection tool. So this is a tool that is going to help to give some orientation in what is out there in terms of evaluation of antimicrobial use and antimicrobial resistance. So first, um, the relevant question is what, what did we look at? So it was based on a um, systematic, or not the systematic, on the review of, of what was out there in terms of evaluation of surveillance, integrated surveillance of antimicrobial resistance and antimicrobial use. So, um, in a nutshell, we have uh, the ATLAS framework, which is a framework developed by the uh, Food and Agricultural Organization to assess laboratory and AMR surveillance systems. Then we have the uh, tool developed by the CIRAD, the French uh, Institution for Research for Development, um, with a tool for the evaluation of collaboration for One Health surveillance tools. Then we have a tool uh, which is a framework for integrated surveillance systems uh, for AMR that was developed by Cecile and her colleagues. Then we have the international health regulations, which were from the WHO, the joint external evaluation tool, the second edition, which is also from the WHO and uh, the OAE. Uh, we have a um, evaluation tool for, uh, to assess uh, integrated approaches to health in one health particular, uh, particularly, and a tool there to assess the uh, one healthness or the knowledge integration, which was developed by a group of research institutions and a, a cost network. Then we have OASIS, which is uh, also being developed by CIRAD in France, which is the tool to analyze surveillance systems. Then we have uh, One Health app, which is a tool developed by USAID um, to assess planning and performance of One Health. Then we have the progressive management pathway by the Food and Agricultural Organization, specific for antimicrobial resistance. Then we have uh, the <clears throat> performance or the assessment or the tool for the evaluation of performance of veterinary services by the uh, World Animal Health Organization. Then we have um, a, pro a, um, a tool that was produced by the Royal Veterinary College uh, together with some governmental organizations um, in the UK for a surveillance evaluation um, as a framework. And then finally, we have the New Zealand Ministry for Primary Industries who have developed this surveillance evaluation framework um, that is called SERP. So those are the, the frameworks uh, that we are investigating or that we did investigate. If you are aware of some um, frameworks that are not cited here, it may be that it is one that is derived from one of those. So basically, if um, there, there's a number of, of uh, other tools that derive from the CERVAL and some that derive from the ATLAS tool. So when those were derivatives of those tools, we did not assess them separately, but we actually assumed that this was covered by this um, original tool. So what did we do? We, um, 
we collected all the questions that were uh, asked by those tools, overall something over a thousand questions, um, and then we uh, developed themes based on grounded theory. So we went through one question after the other to um, assess in a group of three on how what, what theme was covered by that question. And as we progressed, we, we refined the definition of the themes. And if we, we thought it was necessary to uh, develop another theme, we, uh, we invented that new theme and we kept um, evolving like that until the end of the thousand questions were all attributed to one or several themes. So it was um, in fact um, the case that finally some questions were not unequivocally part of one particular theme but actually would cover several themes. So this um, we, we took into account at the end and we just decided that some, to, some questions could be attributed to several themes. Um, this has a bit of an impact on the way we need to interpret the results because what we did then was that we counted the questions for each theme and we generated the proportion of questions. Uh, sorry, we counted the question for each tool and then we calculated the proportion of questions that were attributed to a specific theme and that was the weight given uh, to that theme by the tool. So basically the, the proportion of questions that are attributed to a particular theme uh, give give the weight of, of that uh, theme for, for the specific tool. Now note if some uh, questions have been um, used several times, that means that that proportion is obviously rising and the proportions are more than, could potentially be more than 100%, but we account, like we, we standardized for that. So when you go on the on the web page, you, what you will find is that you are uh, looking at these various themes that you can see here. So the, the top one is the technical operations of surveillance. So here we're assessing elements that are part of technical uh, aspects of surveillance. They are not specific to AMR. If we're looking into specific uh, surveillance elements for AMR, they would be down at the bottom here. So this is everything that is specific to antimicrobial use and antimicrobial resistance. Um, then there's another theme which are resources. So what resources are available in terms of finances, personnel, uh, laboratory surfaces, and these kind of things um, that are available. Then we have the output that is generated and questions that are directed at how the information is used. Then we have questions at integration. So how data is integrated, how um, information is integrated which is also separate from uh, the next theme, which is about collaboration, which can also be interpreted as, as integration, but in this case, we separated it in terms of collaboration. So how, how do various players and stakeholders uh, collaborate? And uh, then how, um, is, uh, question, then were, there were another set of questions which are addressed at how uh, progress was warranted. So how the, um, the tools were adaptive or the, the assessment, how did the assessment, the evaluation um, contribute um, to a progress and adaptability of the surveillance system. So as a user, the first thing you will be doing is that you're setting your, your slider here and you will set uh, a certain uh, level, uh, which is a weight between zero and hundred and the sum of all these sliders should add to 100, um, basically 100%. And the outcome that you will receive is then basically multiplying every each one of those themes with the weight that we calculated for those themes for each of the tools. And then those uh, products are being added. And that is the result then um, as, a, as a value of your degree of, su of suitability. So um, you can see that here on the, on the left-hand side, we have a, an emphasis on output and use of information, on integration, collaboration, and surveillance items that are specific to AMR and AMU. And therefore, um, the most suitable tool would be um, this ISSEP, which was also specifically uh, designed for the assessment of integrated 
uh, surveillance of AMR and AMU. And then there's the progressive pathway of the FAO for uh, antimicrobial resistance, which would be the second best. And uh, you will see that OASIS, for example, is a tool that will uh, probably not cover the needs that you have or the, the requirements that you are uh, prioritizing. So uh, we can only invite you to go and have a look. You can, you can insert, you can set your, your priorities, play around. You can also set one for 100%, then you will see how, which, um, which tools are, are specifically uh, unilaterally designed for specific ideas. Um, there are some tools that are very technical, some tools are very uh, integrative, so very oriented towards integrating knowledge and collaboration, and, and those are, are very different. So when it comes to deciding what you're going uh, to do and which uh, tool you're going to select, you, you're going to have to think about what your priorities are, how, where you want to go, and maybe it's even a combination of two tools that are going to deliver the requested um, needs that you have. There's further help um, on the homepage, so you will find a detailed explanation of the themes. Uh, you will find a description of the evaluation tools, also quite detailed, and then uh, obviously with a link to the tool and, the, and all the resources that uh, are needed for it, and then uh, a number of case studies of applications that are going to go into details on how you should uh, apply it and what the experience was um, of those who, who conducted those case studies and that is what Liz is going to talk about in a minute. So uh, we encourage you to visit that page at uh, guidance.ft7-riskscore.eu uh, which may be known for some of you already as a, as a website but the domain has changed with guidance in the front and with that, uh, I'm left to acknowledge everyone who has helped. There's a lot of work that has gone into this, as you can imagine. And I'd like to thank the working group members and also all the participants of this Coeval AMR uh, network who have all contributed with their ideas, thoughts, and data. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Simon. That was great. And over to Lise, please. Yes. Hello, everybody. Let me see. Can you see my screen now? Yeah, it looks good. Thank you. Uh, I'm happy to be able to present the work done in the case study group as part of the Coeval AMR phase one. Um, the way that I learned the most is not so much from theory, but it's much more from application. So when we had our first meeting in London, I asked whether it would, be you, it would be possible to use case studies because that is usually the easiest way for people to understand new things. And immediately I was appointed to be the head of this group. And I'm very happy now two years later that I'm able to present the results of all our work. So if we go back and we look at surveillance systems, then it makes a lot of sense to say that we need regular evaluation because if not, we're not sure that our systems and our resources invested are invested in the right way because we want our programs to remain operational, efficient and cost effective. And that also deals for programs about antimicrobial use and resistance. And maybe in particular with surveillance programs which have integrated activities in animals, humans, and in the environment. The question is how to evaluate. And our um, experience is that it is indeed important to consider what the evaluation objective is. What is it that we want to evaluate? Once we know that, then we should go in and choose an evaluation tool that can ensure that we can make a thorough and systematic evaluation. And then comes the next question, which tool to use? As Simon was explaining, a plethora of tools exists. So what we did in our working group was that we decided to assess a series of evaluation tools using case studies. And hence it is the user's experience regarding application 
and essential characteristics of each of the tools. In our group, we managed to evaluate six different tools, and it was Atlas, Ecosur, ISEP, NEO, PMP, AMR, and SERP tools. And what we did was that each of these tools, they were applied to an existing AMU or AMR surveillance program in either Belgium, Canada, Denmark, Italy, the Netherlands, Norway, United Kingdom, or Vietnam. And we developed a way of assessing the tool. We did it in three different ways for each tool. We evaluated 11 predefined functional aspects, such as workability concerning the need for data, for time, or for people. Then we also looked at a SWOT-like approach of the user's experience in a TripAdvisor style. And here we answered four questions, such as things that I liked or that the tool covered well. Next, we evaluated eight predefined themes related to the scope of the tool, and that included development purpose, collaboration, etc. And the results, in brief, are the following. Atlas, Ecosur, Neo, and PMP, AMR, that those systems contain scoring systems to obtain semi-quantitative results. And that is a bit contrary to ISEP and SERP tools, which provide a plan for how to conduct the evaluation. Ecosur, ISEP, Neo, and SERP tools allow for in-depth analysis, requiring more complex data, more information, and specific training of the evaluators. Atlas, ISEP, and PMP AMR, they were developed specifically for AMR-related activities. And ISEP and NEO, they were considered the best tools for evaluation of broader One Health aspects. If you're interested in deciding, looking at the quality of collaboration, then we would recommend you to go to Ecosur or ISEP. And if you're a risk manager and you would like to have a user-friendly tool, then please choose Atlas and PMP AMR. If you're interested in laboratory activities, we recommend you to go to using Atlas. And if you're really interested in the direct measures for integration and impact on decision making, then we think you should use the ISEP tool. Summing up, we found that each tool has its own advantages and disadvantages. And Again, it is required to have a clear evaluation question that will make it a lot easier to select the most suitable tool. Our experience is also that adequate resources are needed to perform the evaluation and training is needed to make the assessor acquainted with the tool. Moreover, the evaluation often require involvement of several assessors or stakeholders and you should be aware that it may take weeks to months to make a full evaluation. The output so far is a paper by Lisa Rosenbaum Nielsen et al. in Clinical Microbiology and Infection, where we have combined, um, we looked at three evaluation tools for the Danish case, and it's an open access paper. And then Mayanne Sandberg et al., there's a paper on the revision in Frontiers and Veterinary Science, where we're reporting from all the work taking place in our case study group. And finally, we also have developed a reporting template, which you can find on the website of Coeval AMR, and that will enable other users to also report their experiences. So in conclusion, evaluation is complex and requires clear specification of the evaluation objective, and an appropriate evaluation tool should be selected. We have provided a portfolio of 20 users experiences representing eight country based case studies in which six different tools were applied. And we did that so we could highlight the tools attributes, the pros, the cons and the requirements. And we hope that these case studies can help providing guidance on how to identify the best match between the evaluation objective you may have the resources available and the selected evaluation tool.
Regarding ideas for the next phase where we will continue working with the case studies is that at least my ideas is that I think we should refine our methodology, refine the SWOT-like questions, and maybe also adjust some of the assessment questions related to the functional aspects and the coverage, and look into more details into the aspects of governance and how to assess the outcomes. Is it an outcome on short-term, middle-term, or long-term we're talk talking about? And what are the relevant social science aspects? And I hope we can apply the updated assessment approach to more countries and using more tools. And here, this slide shows you all the members of uh, the country case, country case working group. And I'd like to acknowledge them all for all their contributions, because I think we have done a, a really interesting piece of work. At least I have learned a lot. And I hope others also can make use of our results. And now, Laura and Daniele, they will continue and talk about their case in more details. So I will stop for now. Thank you. Thank you very much, Liz, for your lovely presentation. Over to Daniele and Laura. And just to say there's a question in the chat. We can have uh, questions and answers after the presentations. But if you, if you have questions while people talk, please do put them in, in the chat or just um, write them down for, for later. Thank you. Over to you. Okay. Uh, good morning or good afternoon to everyone. Um, so uh, within the case study group, uh, I and Daniele um, performed an evaluation <clears throat> using two evaluation tools, uh, the One Health, uh, <clears throat> One Healthness uh, tool of NEO and the FAO Progressive Management Pathway for AMR. And uh, we analyzed uh, the implementation of the classic farm system in swine production. Classic farm system is a part of the national action plan on AMR uh, carried out by Italy. Uh, as regards the veterinary sector, the key points of this national action plan are a complete digitization of veterinary medicinal products, including the electronic prescription of, the, of drugs and uh, an integrated risk categorization for livestock farms. So Classy Farm System is a, a risk categorization tool um, system uh, that uh, is based on an integrated approach. So it is based on biosecurity, welfare, animal health, uh, lesions and slaughterers, and also uh, the use anti of antimicrobials and AMR. In particular, we focused on the implementation of, the, of this classified system in swine production in Piedmont region, uh, that is our region in the northwest of Italy, and that is the third Italian region for pig production. So the first, uh, the first tool we use is the NEO evaluation tool, which was developed uh, in the framework of the cost action NEO. We have been we, we talked about it uh, uh, earlier. And the tools allow us to uh, assess uh, the, to which extent the six aspects of knowledge integration are implemented in uh, a given One Health initiative, or as it is in our case, in a surveillance initiative. To, to apply the tool and to help us in uh, applying the, in conducting the evaluation, we interview uh, relevant actors and uh, stakeholders. And our work was carried out from June to October 99, before, before COVID. Hmm. Laura, next slide, could you? Yes. Um, uh, as a, as a illustrated in the spider uh, in the spider diagram, uh, um, the evaluation of the classic farm system show a limited uh, degree of uh, one health uh, in implementation. You know, and uh, the, the part uh, concerning the infrastructure and systemic organization 
had uh, the highest uh, score. The, um, because because the, uh, is quite imbalanced because the animal health component prevailed over the human and the environmental component of our, uh, of our system. Next slide, Laura, thank you. And then uh, now, uh, uh, as regards our own experience in using the tool, uh, we score the different aspects of teams uh, which uh, the, our uh, working group use to describe the tool. And we point out that the, the new tool was not uh, uh, created for um, uh, MRMU, but for the evaluation of the so-called uh, uh, one else uh, And uh, for this reason, probably collaboration and integration are well covered by the tool. And while other other uh, themes are not uh, well covered, please. Okay, <clears throat> as second uh, tool, we use the um, FAO progressive management pathway for AMR. Uh, which was developed by FAO. Uh, and this was specifically uh, created to provide guidance to countries for the development uh, uh, of uh, national action plan, uh, plans against uh, antimicrobial resistance. Um, as for the NEO uh, tool evaluation, we um, took advantage of, of interviews to representatives of stakeholders and actors who take part to this classiform system. And this is the dashboard that is the result of our evaluation in the FAO PMP tool. Uh, and uh, this dashboard represents uh, the progress is made by the National Action Plan in four focus areas. Um, governance, practice, evidence, and awareness. In our case, uh, uh, governance and evidence were, were well developed compared to other aspects, but we have to point out that at the time we performed the evaluation, some actions of classy farms had mm. not been implemented yet. And uh, hopefully we will uh, um, integrate this, uh, this evaluation during the second phase of the, of the COEVAL AMR project. As regards uh, our experience in using the FAO PMP tool, um, we, we underlined that it was uh, possible to specifically evaluate AMU, AMR, because uh, as, as I said before, uh, this was the specific uh, purpose of, of, uh, of, of this tool when it was created. And um, it was, it, so there are some aspects uh, such as AMU, AMR, AMR or the adaptivity, which are well, uh, represented and, and to you to, to, to achieve while other um, aspects are less um, easy to, 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 to gather from, 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 the, from the evaluation. Daniele? Yep. So um, basing on the, on the SWOT analysis uh, of the evaluation tool use of the two tools, uh, as uh, Liz already mentioned, uh, our take-home message are basically that okay, we liked we like Neo because it's very comprehensive, especially if you want to evaluate uh, integrated one health initiative. However, it's quite uh, complicated. Uh, it is quite time-consuming to apply, and it, it requires a specific uh, training and background, especially in, in social science, if you want to use it at its best. On the other hand, uh, uh, FAO PMP is easier to apply um, uh, and allows to uh, evaluate the implementation of the different step of a project. And, uh, it does not allow a, a full uh, one health evaluation and is not good at covering social and environmental component which uh, the new tool does so that basically the the, the, the take-home message for the use of our uh, tools uh, of the two tools on in our case study and uh, for further information, this is the last slide. So for further information, we can contact Laura and myself and visit the website of the, of the project. And uh, there is also a video uh, 
in the guidance website. So thank you, grazie, merci. Thank you very much.